Welcome back everyone! Following up the last lessons, in this video we will dive into the meshing process, which is the final step before setting up the simulation itself. If this is your first time working on an engineering simulation, you might be asking yourself what meshing is and how it is linked to simulation. When we understand the general idea behind structural simulation, the origin of the term meshing and its role in the process of simulation will become clear. We will now take a step back and consider a simple metal cube. Imagine that you fix the entire left side of the cube so that it cannot move, and then uniformly pull on the right side. In this case, we can exactly calculate the force which is needed to reach a given elongation by multiplying the stiffness of the metal by the displacement. Based on the cross-section of the cube, it is even possible to calculate the stress. Replacing the cube with the hook will change the problem completely. Because of the complexity of the geometry, we cannot use our previous approach. But there is something else that we can do. Instead of racking our brains to find an exact solution for the elongation of this specific hook, we can rebuild our hook from small cubes to compute an approximate solution. It seems too good to be true, but the fundamental idea behind structural simulation is to divide complex geometries into simple elements so that we can compute or at least approximate the solution locally and assemble this local solution into the global solution of our problem. This is in fact the reason why this approach is called finite element analysis. The elements can consist of tetrahedral, hexahedral, and pyramid elements. The results of a structural simulation highly depend on the quality of the mesh. Using finer elements will improve the accuracy of the simulation results by capturing small displacements or stresses in greater detail. At the same time, fine meshes are more computationally expensive, requiring increased memory and CPU time. It is also possible to increase the precision of an element without changing its size by using a more accurate element type. These so-called second-order elements can be very helpful for complex load cases. Now that we have discussed the basic concepts of meshing, the time has come to learn how to create a mesh from a CAD model. Now we will switch to the SimScale platform and learn how to create a mesh based on an example. In your workspace, you will find your existing projects on the project list on the left side. We will create a new project for our mesh. Now switch to the Mesh Creator tab by clicking the related button in the main ribbon bar. Since we have just created the project, we first need to upload a geometry according to the instructions from our last video. Please note that we have provided a public link of the geometry for you to download. Click the Add Mesh Operation button. On SimScale you have access to several meshing tools for different applications and simulation types. For structural simulations, you can choose between an automatic and a manual version of tetrahedralization. In this case, we will use the fully automatic tetrahedralization. The big advantage of this operation is that it only requires a few input parameters to create a high-quality mesh. We will create a first-order fine mesh using two processing cores, which will accelerate the meshing process. Please select these settings on your screen and then save. Start the mesh operation by clicking the Start button at the top of the mesh operation window. You can see the status of your operation on the progress bar below the project tree. When it becomes green, the meshing is complete. The progress bar is now green, so meshing is complete. Looking at the mesh operation event log, we can scroll down and see that the mesh computation passed the quality check. This will be automatically done by the platform. Although its result will not prevent you from running a simulation based on the mesh, for the success of the simulation we recommend that you make sure that the result is satisfactory. To take a look inside the mesh, you can use the clipping filter which you will find in the model taskbar. This filter will cut the mesh by a plane which you define using a reference point in normal direction. Thank you very much for watching this video. In the next video, we will set up a simulation based on this mesh.